let's talk quoting small events and I want to pass along one of my favorite shortcuts to make it way easier for you to be able to quote intimate events. Hello flower fam, welcome back to another action-packed flowering adventure. I mean, they're not really action-packed, but they're useful. And if you're new here, welcome to one of the best corners of the internet. You're in the perfect place if you are a floral designer or a flower farmer on a mission to build a successful and profitable business. My name is Kathleen and we talk about all things marketing, money, and managing your mindset. And today I wanted to pass along one of my favorite shortcuts, one of my favorite like systems hacks when it comes to being able to book more clients, book better customers, and spend way less time on admin. So let's get into it. One of the areas in our business that we got really kind of muddled up in and that took us years to figure out that there was a better way is those customers that come to you and they say hey i am having a baby shower or we're having a birthday dinner for my nan it's her 80th birthday but it's that messy middle section when somebody emails and says i want to order some centerpieces and i need them delivered or i will come by and pick them up for like anywhere between like four table arrangements to like 16 and we spent so long in our business wasting way too much time because I didn't realize that there was a, a better way to navigate these inquiries, but this middle ground between basically ordering off your website for a daily flower delivery and whatever you want your all singing, all dancing wedding inquiry process to be. This middle ground where somebody's just looking for some centerpieces. And what I wanted to talk you through today is the system that we created that made it so much easier for us to be able to navigate these inquiries. Because what was happening in our business is that because we hadn't created a system, it kind of all ended up being this bottleneck of Kathleen having to get back with all of these custom quotes to all of these customers. And I know for sure we lost out on a whole bunch of revenue because it was left to me to get back to these people and I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, too hard, too hard, too hard. Or we would send a response back to our customers but our response would have a hundred questions in it. I mean, realistically, like three. And they were spending as much time on like the consultation and the quoting process as they were in terms of how long it would take us to deliver these things or how long it would take us to design these things. And I realized it was so inefficient. So we, over a little bit of trial and error, came up with a totally different system to help navigate those kind of middle of the road inquiries. And I want you to have total permission to take this system, make it your own, and build on it, make it better. One of the biggest mistakes we made in our business and that I consistently see floral designers make is the idea that the customer is dictating what is made. So just like in a restaurant where you'd have a head chef, you might have an executive chef who is in charge of creating the menu and then the customers come in and buy items off the menu, it's exactly the same concept in your business. And this is the biggest mindset shift to make as a floral designer who owns a business. And one of the best ways to streamline your approach is to recognize that you are in the driver's seat, that you are in control and you get to sit down and decide now what your ideal centerpiece looks like. This one thought process that I'm gonna talk you through today changed the game for us in terms of both the speed at which we could go back to our customers, which immediately led to booking more revenue, but even better than that, the consistency and the work that was leaving our team, right, that was going out the door for these deliveries, it just met such a higher benchmark because it was planned ahead of time and it came from my expectation of what I wanted a centerpiece to look like. So it didn't come from a pin Interest photo that our customers gave us. It didn't come from, well, I guess I could make that design for this much money. And that's how I ran our business for the first like four years <laughs> until I landed on this concept of you get to put yourself in the driver's seat of your business. This idea flies in the face of so much of what you will see inside of the floral design industry. So it's okay that it feels uncomfortable, but because you are the person who owns the business, it is the truth. So from there and from the recognition that you are the creative director of your business, now you get to sit down and decide, okay, 
what format in terms of table arrangements, in terms of centerpieces, in terms of basic event florals that you want to offer your customers, what formats do you want to offer? Because you need to decide that first so that you can then sit down and figure out, okay, now I'm going to create a centerpiece and you get to make every next decision. Do you want to offer them in a concrete container? Do you want to offer them in a glass container? Do you want to offer them in something else? And I know a couple of you are going to be like, but what does the customer want? Your customers don't know what's possible. All they see is a whole bunch of pictures on Pinterest and they've come to you because you're the expert. So take the position of the expert and just decide these are the formats or this is the format that I want to offer my centerpiece in for my customers and then you build the rest of the system from there but the most important thing to remember is that there's no right and there's no wrong when it comes to the actual format of your centerpieces I spent years trying to convince myself that there was a right way to do centerpieces yes there are some fundamentals in terms of table styling and structure and shapes and sizes and proportions that are really helpful and really important to learn but if your brain is like hmm I need to know the right way. The right way is whatever way you think looks good. So that, my friends, is tip number two. Decide the formats or the format that you want to offer your table arrangements in, and then we'll move on to step number three. Now you can get to work figuring out what specific ingredients you want to feature in your designs. Personal preference in terms of do you use foliage? Do you not use foliage? How many focal flowers? Do you even use focal flowers? How many line flowers? How many filler flowers? It's all up to you and you get to decide what ratios, what proportions, and you looking at other designers' work and you deciding for yourself what you like the look of. And this can take years. So don't feel like you have to figure this out overnight. And your design aesthetic is also going to change year after year. That's the beautiful thing about being a designer is that when you recognize that you're in charge of your business and that you're the creative director, you can just decide that you love baby's breath. And then five years later, you can be like, I don't ever want to use this again. If you think about how many different painters there are in the world, that's how many different styles of floristry there are. There are literally thousands of permutations and combinations. You'll have your kind of short list of your favorite ingredients and then creating recipes becomes super simple super straightforward because over time you'll learn that peonies are too big for this situation hydrangea is too big for that situation cafe au lait dahlias are too big for that situation and i love baby's breath and i love dry ingredients and foliage yeah and it does take practice and it does take time but i just want to give you permission to decide for yourself what kinds of ingredients you love to use and then we move on to step four. Once you've decided the format that you want to create your centerpieces in, and then you've narrowed down the kinds of ingredients that you want to be using, what your personal preferences are, then you're going to take those two things and combine it together and you're going to create yourself a base recipe. For example, in this cylinder 12 by 12 glass container, I have five dyed mums. I have about half of a bunch of not in bloom Andromeda or Pyrrhus couple of stems of wax flower, I have one bunch of mini pixies, and then I also have four or five stems of kale. Then I also have the container, I have the tape, and I have the ribbon. And that becomes the base foundation for this size of table arrangement. So depending on the format that you're gonna use and how many formats you wanna offer your clients, and I would highly recommend that you limit the choice because that recipe is based off of your design preferences, that recipe is based off of how abundant and how lush and how full you want your design to be, and it's based off of how you want to combine textures and colors together. So this is really, really embracing the fact that you are in charge of your business and you are the head chef. So that the chef, i.e. you, get to present your version of this is dinner. This is my version of dinner and this is what it looks like. These are the kinds of ingredients that I use. This is the stem count of it. This is how I combine the textures. This is the kind of container I'm going to use and this is the kind of finishing. When we go to step five and we price it out to the formula, it becomes super simple because with your base recipe, now you can sit down and you just do the math and you can decide, okay, so this is the format, these are the kinds of ingredients, this is my base recipe based on how abundant I want this to be, and then we just do the math. And then it becomes so much simpler to be able to navigate putting that order in with your customer because you just go through the process of actually just pricing out your arrangement and that becomes the price. 
so that you can sit there and you can brief your team and you can have your system in place so that if a customer comes along and says, hey, we are having lunch at, insert name of the venue, that you already have a price. And that price is based off of your expectations of what a centerpiece looks like. It's not based off of a custom image that somebody has sent to you. This is about you claiming your expertise and you deciding and really knowing what's going to look good. So in this instance, with this cylinder glass 12 by 12 centimeter container, I know that based off of this stem count, because I like how big and abundant this arrangement is, I think it would be perfect for a 10 top table if they're gonna have name cards and they might have a few other little bits of here, or it could be used in a rectangular table situation as well. I know that if I quote the client this amount of money, that I will have the amount of money that I need to make the table arrangement have the impact that I want it. To have. This process completely shifts the dynamic in terms of how you go about navigating quotes with your customers because it's not about us making the design fit their budget. It's about them making a decision about what's important and what they want to prioritize. Because when we make table arrangements like this, in many cases, the customers are going to be surprised at how much they cost, and that's okay. It's not our job to adjust the table arrangement to fit their budget. It's our job to give our clients a recommendation and guidance, demonstrate our expertise, and make it easy for them to spend money. It's a totally different relationship. So this does involve some decision-making ahead of time, but you will make much better, well-informed, profit-based <laughs> decisions ahead of time when you go through this work. What happens is that, let's say this afternoon, a customer emails you and says, hey, we're having lunch with my nan at this restaurant. There's going to be 20 of us. We're gonna be sitting at one giant long banquet table. I am looking for a quote in terms of table arrangements. Do you know what's so awesome? Is that within about five minutes, you are able to email them back and say, it's so amazing to hear from you. We would absolutely love to help out with your flowers at insert date, insert venue. When it comes to a long banquet table of that size, we do recommend that there is one table arrangement between every six guests. So we would say, go with three. You could definitely do four. Of course, you can always do more. In terms of costs, it's gonna be three times. Insert your price for the table arrangement, add your delivery on top, give them the total, and that is the end of your email. It is so powerful because it is so simple. And again, it is just based off of this process of making decisions ahead of time, really recognizing that you are the person who is the creative director in your business. This one system that we created to be able to quickly quote these kind of middle of the road, general table arrangement questions that our customers have completely cut down on the amount of time that our team and that I was wasting on admin, right? Even the most junior person on our team knew, okay, this is the minimum price that we're ever going to quote for a table arrangement. It made the sales process so much simpler. And as I said before, the work that was coming out of our team was so much better because we had the appropriate budget to be able to create the work that I wanted to be able to create. You just have to make a handful of decisions ahead of time and then you can be booking in these customers the same day with so much less effort because they could send an email you could ping the email back they might say oh that's great we'll take three you send them the invoice they put the payment through it's so much simpler versus the experience that we had for the first few years of my business where it's like oh, okay well where am i going to source that kind of container and i want to make sure that that kind of ingredient is there and pulling up the reference photo and trying to make it look exactly the same and hating the vast majority of the work that we were putting out into the world because it wasn't based on my vision and it wasn't based on my expectations so this is really about putting yourself in the driver's seat taking control of the situation and making some intentional decisions and it has such an incredible ripple effect on your sales process. So feel free to take this system, make it your own, my friends, because it is absolute magic. If you know anybody else who could benefit from watching this video, definitely share it with them. And as always, my friends, have the most amazing week and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.